Hi Dave, thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing something of your story. Why don't you tell us first of all who you are and what you're doing now? Well, my name is Dave Steadman and uh, I'm a Baptist minister by calling and training and profession, but currently working for an organization called African Pastors Fellowship, which is involved in Christian leadership development in Africa. Excellent. And, and what's your connection to Canterbury Baptist Church? It's a long connection, I think. It is. Yeah, I've, I've well, I've been a, a member of, of Canterbury Baptist Church since December 2020. In fact, it, it, it's 20 years ago today um, that we moved to Canterbury. Um, but we moved to Canterbury for, for, for me to become the, the minister of the church uh, at that time. So for, for the first 14 years of our association with CBC, it was as the minister. Um, but more recently, it's um, obviously a, a somewhat different relationship. But um, uh, Andrew and I go back a long way because Andrew was a student. And I can remember Andrew sitting on the steps outside the church as it used to be before the refurbishment and is saying he'd never really quite got round to being baptized and um we went through things like andrew's baptism andrew and jenny getting married andrew's call into ministry and various different ministries that that uh, that he pioneered and we worked on together in the church so so we go back a very long way and, and andrew was the first of a number of ministers in training that came through the church during my time so um i'm really delighted to be able to to just share a little bit with you and with Andrew today. Thank you. So uh, tell us, Dave, about your, your calling to Baptist ministry. What did that look like? Well, I, I didn't grow up in a, in a Christian home and had many questions that I used to fire at Christians uh, and many hang-ups really about God, which, which really grew out of... Um, my experience of of having a sister who was severely disabled and the sense of injustice um that that went with that um and and my sister kim sadly died when she was 23 i was 20 um and and at that time i happened to be going out with a girl who was a christian her family were all uh, very committed to to a local charismatic Baptist church, and uh, and they they were good to me. They were patient with me, um, and very hospitable, and and really as a courtesy to them, I I would occasionally go along to church, um, and it was nothing like I thought church was. Um, I was impressed by the quality of the relationships. It was a real vibrancy in worship. And, and Andrew Kane, who was the, the pastor of that church, was a fantastic, is a fantastic preacher. And I would just be kind of captivated by what he was saying each week and, and coming away and thinking about it and thinking that, you know, that makes so much more sense than I, than I ever realized. Um, so to cut a, a long story short, um, after probably 18 months or two years of, of becoming an increasingly regular visitor to the church, um, there was a baptismal service. Um, and at the end of the service, there was an altar call for, for people to receive Christ. And, and I, I went forward. And um, as I was being prayed for that day, I, I, I had a really strong sense that I wouldn't have necessarily used this language at the time, but a sense that God was saying, this really is good news. And I was saying, yeah, why has no one told me before? Why have, I, why have I got to being 21 before anyone told me this? And, and this sense that God was saying, well, that's what I want you to do. Um, so to so my conversion and my sense of call to ministry were pretty much simultaneous. But it wasn't for another couple of years until after I was married. The other kind of coincidence in all of that is that the girl who was being baptized that day was Syrah who's now my wife um so I lost the first girl but I gained the second one uh, I, I gained the better one sorry and um uh and together with Syrah we began to explore what that call really was and in conversation with Andrew Kane and other leaders in the church there um it, it became clear that that was to train for Baptist ministry which is what I did Brilliant. And we, we've talked before um, on, on the course I'm, I'm running and in other places that often 
your callings discerned in so many ways, but talking with others is a, is a key one, the way that God uses others to speak into our lives. Tell us about your call to serve as CEO of African Pastors Fellowship. It's interesting that you, you well, you're still a Baptist minister, but you've stepped out of pastoral ministry of a type into a different type of ministry, into to mission work, really, overseas mission. And, and the CEO of a, of a charity. Tell us about, about that, how the, the calling and how you, why you made that transition. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I, I'm perhaps a little bit defensive sometimes when particularly early on after I'd made that, that step, people would say to me, well, now that you're no longer in ministry, and I, I was saying, to them, no, I'm, I'm still in, in ministry. Yeah. It's just a different type of, of ministry. Um, but I think there were kind of two aspects, really, um, uh, to that sense of call. One, one was 14 years is a long time to be the pastor of, a, of one church. And during that period of time, the church went through some huge transitions, culminating in the, in the refurbishment project. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, coinciding with that over the years, I, I'd had increasing opportunities to travel, to minister, to to, to, to teach and to, to come alongside Christian workers overseas and especially in, uh, in Africa uh, and particularly through the Atria Bible School link that, that the church still has. So I had, I had that, that sort of sense that, that God was opening up opportunities for yeah. me and for a long time, for a number of years, I felt that whenever the time for, for me to draw a line at, at CBC as the minister, that it probably wouldn't be to another local church, at least not immediately. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, that coincided with the culmination, really, of, of the of the refurbishment projects. And I can remember sitting in um, in the office after we'd moved back into the church and kind of looking around and thinking, "This is fantastic. This is everything we prayed for. Uh, there's so many opportunities." Uh, some of them are already kind of beginning to open up and happen. And I, and I sat there and I just had this sense that that's somebody else's job to do now. Mm-hmm. Um, that, uh, that the job that I'd been called to do had been done. Um, and to actually move into that new future was, was somebody else's calling. Um, and alongside that, I'd become a trustee of APF and... And I guess I also knew, if not consciously, subconsciously, that there was probably going to be an opportunity for, for some kind of paid role with APF. So it, it partly was a sense of completion at CBC uh, and partly a sense of God speaking to me over a number of years through traveling and in particular going back again and again to Africa that actually ministry was going to look quite different going forward so so those things didn't they didn't exactly dovetail there was there was a, a yeah. number of months a year or so of kind of soul searching and wrestling and and discerning um but ultimately the the decision was made that yep time time's up for me at CBC but APF was uh, what God was calling me to do and, it, and it's such a privilege to be able to do that that work and you've been with me in Africa and seen some of the some of the work that goes on and the, the people um, so for me to be able to come alongside sometimes you know very senior influential learned people who are who are serving God in 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 difficult circumstances to be able to come alongside them and just be a critical friend and a support and maybe be able to resource their ministry a little bit is you know that 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 for me is 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 extremely worthwhile but um i do sometimes ask the question god surely there was someone better um than me to be doing that but you you know you know best here i am and uh, i do the best that i can yeah oh, well dave thanks for sharing for sharing with us today and um thank you for everything that you do um, at CBC, and I know you've had a lot of involvement with Swellcliff recently too. And thank you for your work through APF as well. And we we just pray your conti- God's blessing upon your continued ministry. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.